don't get any ideas, I'll sick my dogs on you. <laughs> We're taking a serious look at Romans. Well, seriously. We're going to try anyways. <laughs> With all these guys around, it's kind of hard to take everything too serious. It's kind of like trying to make yourself perfect. You know, you can get serious about it and maybe, you know, kind of make some extra efforts and try really hard. And some people do. You know, I've seen Orthodox with the Zitzis, you know, the shekel and uh, wearing the little you know, curlies, you know. I've seen them with beards. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. You know, and kind of like the pastor said today that I was listening to, they put a box on their locks, you know, well, put a box on their head, but I like to say box on their locks, you know, because they got a lock box there because they got a forgot in a box because it's kind of like, it ain't jack in a box, but there's a big surprise. <laughs> it ain't what you think. So it's interesting that we have in our life those moments where we think we can improve our life by doing what we think is right in the sight of God as opposed to doing what God says to do and what he's already written in his word. That's why we have Bible, you know, Bible studies. The truth is, is to study the Bible. It's not about giving a lecture. And I know you're probably sitting there going, yeah, what kind of Bible study is it when you're sitting there doing all the talking and I'm sitting here doing all the listening? It's called preaching. So in case you're wondering, most Calvary chapels don't do teaching, they do preaching. Yep, back to, back to the matter, Jack. And that's a fact check. But the reality of having God speak to us means that his word would go forth and it could accomplish that purpose with which he sends it forth if we so appoint the direction and the inflection of the genuflection of our lives, meaning that we you know, bow down and let God take over, so that the teacher or the person that's giving the preaching would no longer be the one in charge or responsible for the word that's going forth to a certain degree, but that it would be the Spirit of God causing you to hear what it is that He wants you to hear and giving me the wisdom and the right inspiration to cause that with which God would have come out of my mouth speaking from his place to your face so that you would receive from him grace bottom line it's not just a rhyme it's one of those things that God does in his time and in his way he chooses to use preaching he chooses to use teaching if you happen to go to some place that has you know like pens and papers and gives you homework. I mean, if you want homework, I'll give you some. Go read the book of Romans, you know, and start writing down some things, you know. Write down, oh, I don't know. See if you could get a Bible study program, you know, and instead of looking at the book of Romans with the chapters in it, take the chapters out, the verses out, and then read it once through without any chapters or verses. That's your homework. Good luck. <laughs> some of you that got computers or tablets, you're going, well, wait a minute, let me see if my, my app will do that. You know, thumbs are flying. Woohoo! Hey, check this out, man. I got tic tac toe. Oh, 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 you mean Romans? Oh, sorry about that. No, the reality is that's what teaching would be would be to give you homework, something that you could do, that you have to do, that you have to employ some thinking and some consideration of regurgitation of that with which you heard so that you would make it applicable to your life. So, in some ways, instead of just talking about it, you'd be walking about it because you'd have to go about doing those things that apply to the learning process with which you would be tested on. Now, most preaching just goes to the place of saying, hey, I said it. If they did it, it's up to them. <laughs> Too bad. Or some of us will say, you know, oh, we'll pray ahead of time and we pray now, you know, in Jesus' name, you know, let the word go forth and God, you take over and you do your thing and blah, blah, blah. And some of us just go, hey, you know what? God knows, you know, and you're accountable. If you've seen this video, that means you're now responsible for what you've heard. <gasps> oh, okay. That puts it in a different perspective. Yeah, now you're accountable. 
You weren't before because you didn't know. Now you know, so guess what? you got to go and learn the things that God wants you to learn in Romans. And that's what we're teaching now. We're going through a Bible preaching, teaching, kind of expositional idealism, you know, that we say is that with which you might be instructed and given unto the attainment of wisdom by the application of the Word of God in your life as the Spirit of God gives you understanding and wisdom to apply it in your present circumstances, wherever you are, however you are, dealing with the things that you're dealing with right now, as it fits in your case. If it doesn't fit, you reject it. And quite frankly, you know, you take it to a place where God could use it in the future, which is to retain it inside your spirit so that the Holy Spirit can bring back to your remembrance those things that Jesus has said to you and make applicable in your life that with which he wants to teach you. Because frankly, I'm not really too worried about teaching you as much as I am reaching you with the Word of God. Bottom line. If I can provoke you in some way to study, if I can invoke in you some interest in looking at the book of Romans in a way you've never thought of before, if I could just entertain you, let me entertain you, let me... You know, Gypsy Rose Lee, you know, and Natalie Wood, hey, you know. But I'm not here to entertain you. You see, though I have my posse, you know, my head honchos, you know, they're my bodyguards. You know, they keep close watch over me to make sure that nobody touches my body. And my dog pound back here, you know, which is going to be, you know, out there sicked on you if you mess up or you screw up, you know, because they're the hounds of heaven, you know. And if you know what the hounds of heaven are, then you know what we're doing in Romans. But you're going to find out that applicable to the study, I have a certain venue and methodology to my madness with which I choose to use in the way that I present the book of Romans. And I take that opportunity to maybe get your interest going so that you'll think about these things. You'll ponder them. You'll go with Arsenio Hall and say, hmm, or you'll go, huh, wow, huh, maybe I should do that. Or you'll try it, or I'll just be able to sit here and say, hey, you know, my hands are clean, God, you know, your choice, you do what you will now. One of the things that I'm enjoying today, in my day, you know, before we get started, you know, his way, is that it's interesting as the storms are coming. See the wind? <laughs> it's blowing everything around. And I had to move my camera around, which is where you're at right now. You're on that side, I'm over here. And I had to move some of the plants down so that they wouldn't be blown over and they wouldn't be knocked over and they wouldn't knock something else over and they wouldn't cause a mess. Because that's what happens when storms come. I have to make sure that we batten down the hatches, especially if it's a windstorm and if there's maybe rain involved or thunder or lightning or any number of other things that might go with a storm like hail or tornadoes or earthquakes or, you know, and God, likewise, in our lives, has so too arranged for us His Word so that we would be prepared for the storms that come in life. So we would batten down the hatches. We would be able to withstand those things that are about to come upon the world. Because, fr frankly, you know, between you and I, it don't look so good. I mean, you're not a fool, I'm sure, and you're really not an idiot, you know, but between you and I, I think you know it's the end of the world. Can't go on much longer. I think you know that Israel became a nation. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think you know that you know Jerusalem became the capital. Yeah, they're kind of obvious. I think you know that you know there's things that they call the mark of the beast. You know, like they call them RFID chips, but they're probably not even going to use those. I mean, the truth is, the mark of the beast is the mark. That's why a mark is a mark is a mark. It doesn't say that the mark is a chip because they could have said a chip. It's a mark. It's just simply, you know, it could be a tattoo that just says beast or whatever. <laughs> you know, number of the name, number of his name, the image. No, let's see. The number of his name, the name of the beast. The name of the beast, the number of his name. I forgot the third part already. I'll be darned. I guess that's why we're not studying Book of Revelation. But there are three different aspects of it that could be used 
and you know as well as I do that you know even though it may not be a chip you know like put in or a nano chip which is even tinier that you can't see with a little needle there'll be something that makes you swear allegiance to the flag of the United States of a false messiah that in some ways will cause you to be able to buy and sell or prevent you because you didn't swear allegiance to buy and sell. It's not that complicated. We're trying to make it into something more than what it is. It's really simple, stupid. So really, we all know what it is. I mean, it's pretty simple, you know, like if I told you that you can't open a store until you go get a permit, then you'd say, oh, that's a mark of the beast. Oh, no, you wouldn't. <gasps> you wouldn't? You mean you wouldn't go down and get a permit to buy and sell, and without that permit you can't buy or sell? You wouldn't look at that as a mark of the beast? Or the name of the beast? Or the image of his name? Or whatever it is, you know, all different three of the, the three different things that you are required to have in order to buy and sell? Oh. Huh. You know, maybe he's got a point. Maybe, maybe he'll come up with something in Romans that I hadn't thought of. Don't be surprised. God will open your eyes. So, in the book of Romans, we've decided that we're using Chris Rittenauer from Regal Books, Regal Printers. Anyways, how to be a Christian without being religious. That's our text proof, but what we're going to do is, because we're going through Romans, we're going to read the Bible, you know, and then we're going to let, not me speak, but we're going to go back to this book and read it kind of letting God speak and then we're going to do some commentary while we're going along in it so that you'll maybe possibly just like I just told you about the RFID chip have you ever figured this one out yet by the way knowing that it's the end of the world right I mean you got it don't you think about this oh preppers because there's a lot of people out there that are prepping for the end of the world They're prepping for the end of the world. Can you figure this one out? They are not going to receive the mark of the beast. So they're saying that the mark of the beast is this radio frequency identification marker that's going to be put on their hand. Now, let me ask you this. Maybe you get the picture, maybe you don't. Maybe you understand this and maybe you don't, but what's a taser? I mean, can I get a taser? Can you get a taser? What happens to an RFID chip if you tase somebody? Oops! Didn't think of that, did you? You see, a lot of what people talk about when they interpret things is interesting. It might make you believe it, but if you don't think about it, you just might be caught with your pants down, looking a little foolish. Or you could prove all things and hold fast that which is good. You could examine scripture versus scripture. You could lay it all out on a table, the pieces of the puzzle, and see how they all fit. Then if God says to you, hey, works for me, then it works for you. Go there. And that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it, as we're doing it. We're letting God choose to use the scriptures as he sees fit, not as we would direct you and tell you that, oh, we're right and everybody else is wrong. No, we're not. We're just looking at the scriptures. We're letting the Spirit of God tell us what to do, where to go, how to be, where to say, whispering in our ears, the left, the right, the up, the down, the sideways, whichever way we should be, whether we should talk or not, whether we should walk or stop, whether we should be sitting still or standing up. I mean, he knoweth our down sitting and our uprising, doesn't he? Well, then he ought to be able to instruct us in the way that we should go. In case you're wondering where Romans is, it's you head towards the Milan, you take the south exit, and then you go down the freeway, and you wind up in Rome. No? Oh, okay, not that Romans? <laughs> well, maybe it's on television. <laughs> Maybe it's Discovery Channel. I don't know. But the point being is that we're studying in the book of Romans. We're going to read probably just chapter 1. And I'm not sure how much of chapter 1 we actually read. But 
If I recall, I think we go through Romans 1 through 17 and 1, Romans 1, 1 through, well, anyways, we take 17 verses. So, having said that, let's do that, shall we? And I'll read the Word of God and you can listen. You can go, you know, take a potty break, go take a, you know, smoke break, go take a whatever break. I'll take a Pepsi break. Oh, you want me to read it? Oh, I get it. Okay, fine. I guess I'll read it out loud and you can follow along in your computer, iPad, telephone, whatever it may be. Part of the reason why we do video so nonchalant is because everyone takes it so serious. You know, and Really, God is going to meet you where you're at. And I don't know if you've looked at yourself lately, but you really don't need to take yourself so seriously. You need to really let God apply His grace to you more abundantly by allowing your study of Romans to instruct you in a way that you're going to be set free from a lot of the bondages that you probably got yourself in. Because you may not have known it, but you're probably carrying around a lot of baggage. So looking at Romans, we'll read the Word of God first. So let me put the book over here. Paul, hey, my man, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by... I got to thinking about that. Separated unto. Chosen for. Separated unto. That was his gift. That was his calling. If you want to know what the gospel is, you see Paul. But anyways, well, I'll just read it through, you know, because I just kind of get sidetracked, you know, when I'm reading the word. You know, it's kind of like God whispers in my ear and I go, look at that. Wow, that's kind of cool, Lord. What was that? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome hail Caesar well okay maybe not to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I firstly want to say to you that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Huh. Huh. As I like to say, in this book of Romans, which is really the book of Americans, we have taken the aspect and the attitude that between you and I, there ain't no difference between the Romans and the Americans. Sorry. <laughs> we are a simile of Romans. Matter of fact, if you look at our government, there ain't no difference. If you look at our, and I don't mean by Caesar, I mean like the government as far as, you know, like the Senate, you know, and kind of Congress and all that kind of stuff. If you look at our civil code, if you look at our judiciary code, if you look at our free enterprise system, if you look at our democracy, if you look at almost every aspect of what America is, we are Rome. Now, we're not Rome in prophecy, so let's make that clear. We're not Rome in the Word of God. America's not in the Word of God. Sorry. We're not applicable in those direct ways. But in all the ways that really count, that matter, if you wanted to find the book that talks about America, Romans. Sorry. We have a way of our business model that, quite frankly, isn't just Babylonian in nature. It's Romans. So, when I look at this, you know, I have to stop once in a while and remind us that, you know, we're not really talking about Romans. We're talking about us, meaning USA. We're talking about you, and we're talking about me. If we live in the continent of Americas, and especially in the United States of America, in the North American continent that we inhabit now. Because 
when it says, quite frankly, thanking God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world, America and American Christianity, you know, kind of mixture there, but America is spoken of more when it comes to Christianity than even the Catholic Church quite a bit. Yeah. We send out more missionaries than any other nation in the world, including Rome. So, dare I say, your study in Romans is becoming the book of America. Careful. You may find it more applicable to your personal life than you realize. So knowing this, and starting with this, and recognizing that he thanks God. Let's move on from verse 8 to verse 9 now. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established. We could say rooted and grounded, but you know, we'll just say established. Hey, it's the establishment. Hey, you know, if you're a hippie, you go on and you want to get rooted and grounded. If you're uh, not a hippie, you can say establishment or established. <laughs> kind of a play on words there from the old hippie days. It's kind of fun for me because I kind of go, established? Huh, not me, man. I'm no establishment type person. I'm one of those, you know, free spirits. Not kidding. Just kidding. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and of me. In other words, we would share our faith to faith. The mutual faith we share, of which we know because we share that in common. We are Romans, I mean Americans. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also even as among other Gentiles. That fruit being that, you know, you needed to grow a little. Hey, you know, you needed to you know you needed to get your own, you know, kinda like stick together. You need to get you know, kinda get your act together first. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so we got it. The word of God. The just shall live by faith. Okay, we're done. Good night. See you later. Not. The reality is we still have more to go. For here we go now with the rest of the story. Because it's easy to read and ignore. It's easy to think and reject. It's easy to object and go reject or select. And sometimes people have selective hearing. They have selective appropriation of taking parts that they want for the good stuff and rejecting the bad stuff and saying, oh, don't fit me. Huh. Right. Let's take a look at what we can read and apply to ourselves personally now, being that we're reading the book of Americans. Romans 1, 117. Dear friends in Rome, this letter is from Paul, Jesus Christ's slave chosen to be a missionary and sent out to preach God's good news. Boy, have I got good news for you. This good news, such a good deal. What good news? Let me tell you. It's good news. Good. Then let's hear it. Okay, I'll tell you. This good news was promised long ago by God's prophets in the Old Testament. It is the good news about His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who came as a human baby, for He was born into the King David's royal family line. And by rising from the dead, He proved Himself to be the mighty Son of God and with the holy nature of God in himself. And now, through Christ, all the kindness of God has been poured out upon us as undeserving sinners 
And now he is sending us out around the world to tell all the people everywhere the great things God has done for them so that they too will believe and obey him. Mm. And you, dear friends in Rome, are among those he dearly loves. You too are invited to be his very own, yes, his holy people. May all God's mercies and peace be yours from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me say first of all, let me talk to you straight up that wherever I go, whatever I do, I hear you being talked about. It's in the news. It's on the television. It's being texted. You've made the most recent viral video. Yeah, you, American, Roman. May and how I thank God through Jesus Christ for this good report, this video of you. Wow, I'm impressed. And for each of you, each and every one of you, God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night I bring you and your needs in prayer to the one I serve with all my might, telling others the good news about His Son. And one of the things I keep on praying for you is... One of the things I keep praying for is the opportunity to come to you. God willing to come at last to see you and if possible that I will have a safe trip to meet with you. For I long to see you that I can bring you some spiritual food that will bring you grow, that will help you to grow closer to the Lord and know him more intimately than ever before. Then too, I need your help for I not only want to share my faith with you, but be encouraged by your faith. I want you to impart to me the same knowledge that I'm giving to you of Jesus and what he has done for you, even as I share what he has done for me. In that way, each of us will be a blessing to the other. For as I have been blessed, I will bless you. And as you have been blessed, you will bless me. I want you to know, dear brothers, that I planned to come many times before, but God did not let me to work among you and to see the good results as I have among the other Gentile churches. For I owe a great debt to you and to everyone else, both to the civilized peoples and to the heathen nations, yes, to the educated and uneducated alike, to the street people and to the working class, to the upper echelons and the lower, to those with which work within the agrarian and our farmers, to those that are which are techies and mechies, you know, and learning to do the machinery and the technology. So to the fullest extent of my ability, I'm ready to come to you in Rome, also to preach God's good news. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Jesus. It is God's powerful method of bringing all who believe it to heaven. And that's what the good news is bringing all those who believe in it to heaven. This message was preached first to the Jews only and alone, but now everyone is invited to come to God in this same way. This good news tells us that God makes us ready for heaven, good in His eyes. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus to save us, and the more we trust Him, the more we clearly can see that He has taken away our sins and filled us with His goodness as the Old Testament says it, the man who finds life will find it through trusting Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. How do you feel about that? What do you think about that? What have you heard? What have you seen? What have you handled? What do you think? At this stage, I would say, sit down. Make a recording of what you just heard. Make a interpretation of application of what you want from God by way of hearing this word read in such a way that it directly speaks to your generation, your hearing and understanding very clearly what is said. Because... God spoke to you. God talked to you. This is the book of Americans. This is a book that's written specifically for you. And in your hearing now, you have heard the word of God. You have seen 
that which was from the word of God and that which was from the word of man and you have discovered that Romans and Americans now are in your hands to both apply and to live according to the word of God as he has given unction to you to make it real in your life or to reject it as just something obscure and far away from your life. For only this time will we stop here and take pause to consider well what you're doing with this video that you've listened to and you've seen. For it is your study and not mine. It is your listening and your hearing that is being regarded to whether or not you are hearing what the Spirit may say and rejecting or accepting what God is speaking today. Or will it be that you are considering moving on growing up, maybe not needing all the goofiness in your life anymore, and that maybe it's time to put aside the toys. Maybe it's time to get serious about what your life really is about, and what will give you meaning and purpose in your life. Maybe it's time to recognize who is in your life and who died and rose again for that life. Because it's easy to ignore when you're sitting in a church. It's easy to ignore when you're comfortable in your chair watching television or putting on a popular video that just has the right kind of like tickling of the ears to make you feel comfortable in what you're doing. But I'm not asking you to do that when you watch this video. I'm saying, what are you getting at? What are you doing with it? What do you, you hope to accomplish in your life? I know, for me, I have finished my course. I have run the race. I have done the work that God has sent me to do in this video. And when it's done, I will have said, perfect, I have done what God told me to do. Will you be able to make such a bold statement? Will you be able to stand in the judgment and make such a claim before God Almighty, holy as He is, that in this moment, at this time, when you were given the opportunity to do with this which you have heard, what you choose to do with it as you will, you choose to accept and go forward, or reject and go backwards, or maybe even harden of heart. Or will you think about these things and consider what the Spirit of God is saying? Because the warning is very clear. Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation. Because God is speaking. God wants you to listen. God wants you to hear. And God wants you to not part your heart. The world has done that for most of us and made us very slow to hear. Not very faithful. Not very consistent. And we sure don't know what grace is. So American, in looking at this Roman book, that has been opened up to you as an American to an American, as a faithful minister of God to preach the gospel unto you and to give you the good news of Jesus and to share in the faith that he's given me, would you not now do the same for me and share your faith to what I have done for you? Comment, if you will, and say the comments on the video, but do with this what God would tell you to do. For in the faith that has been given me, I give unto you. And may the Lord bless you with that with which he can increase in you to the fulfillment of the purpose and design that he has for your life, which is the ministry of the gospel you've been chosen to teach and to share with the world out there and the world right around where you are right now. For this is the design with which the book of Romans has been laid out before you. It is a Roman road 
It is wide open. It is straight. It is available to you to walk therein. But the choice is still yours. So I pray and I implore you by the mercies of our God, by the loving kindness that He's given, by the very nature of God's own heart itself, which is love, would you not consider these words you've heard and have been spoken unto you to do them as they have been done unto you? Share the good news. Share your faith. Even as we just start this book of Romans, tell someone about it. Tell someone about who you are in Jesus. Not this video, but tell them who you are. Tell them who you are in Jesus. Tell them the good news of your relationship with God. And then let God do something with that that will blow your mind. Because I would rather see you die as an American but live like the Romans whom we have this testimony of them that Paul has written and recorded for thousands of years that they became that with which we now have a Bible from them I would rather you die as that with which God has created you to be faithful to the end than to simply die as just another American because this book is written to us and it's for us and it will cause us to grow in the knowledge that we have been given an unction from God a very wonderful exciting experience yet to unfold before us which isn't just the studying part that's a good thing too I like it I like studying but really it's to make you to be able to be a Christian without being religious to be who you are where you are, the way you are, the way He wants you to be. And that is what I see our purpose and design in having this time together to share in the Book of Americans that which makes us Romans. Well